What's up, y'all? It is your boy Drake41, aka Mr. 4K, aka Drake41, and welcome to another Let's Talk podcast. On this episode today, we have Shannon, who is the sole developer for the Markout Wrestling game. Also, I have my co-host here, uh, my homie for many, many years, way too many years. We knew each other since in our early or in our 20s. Sean Styles, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? How you doing? And uh, the homie who's wearing the uh, terrible Bullet Club shirt, oh uh, Ken goodness. Washington. What's going on, man? How's it going, Dre? You <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Every day I'm going to do this. It's, it's terrible, but it's fine. Uh. <laughs> so, um, Shannon, man, it's been a minute since we uh, spoke. Uh, last time we spoke was back in November 2019, man, when it wasn't it wasn't the markout game. It was spot callers, man. Yes. Yeah, it's um, it's been a crazy. I'm trying to make sure I keep my eyes on one spot, but it's been a crazy year and a few months. Honestly, a lot has happened. I uh, can't wait to discuss it all. But a couple big things happened. Um, first of all, I, I got rid of my cat. So you, you know, I used to have a little kitten, Nyla. Uh, she's no longer part of the family, but uh, officially got married to my wife. Um, congratulations, congratulations, man. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. And I also have a new addition to my family. My, my first son was born about two months ago. Wow. So, congrats. Uh, nice. congrats, dude. Thank you. Thank you. So life is speeding by, but um, definitely Spy Callers was the original um, before I really had a full vision of what I wanted to do with the game. And Markout is the fine-tuned, okay, COVID sitting, you lost your job, what do you do now? <laughs> like, come up with an actual solid concept, and that's what I've been doing. So, okay. yeah. All right, so, so how was the past year for you? Roller coaster. Mm. It was a roller coaster, if I could just put it in one word. Honestly, it was um like highs, like extreme highs. Like I just mentioned, those two things were probably the biggest things that's ever happened to me in my life so far. Um, and I moved to Florida in 20, like probably it had to be two months after we before we spoke. Mm -hmm. I moved from Michigan to Florida. And um I was I was like in the middle of jobs. So I, I just left full sale. I was working there for about two weeks. And then got an offer at Disney World. So I was, I, mm -hmm. I, I literally got to work on a couple of the rides at Disney World for like three months. And then Kobe hit and they shut everything down. Oh, um, so it was, it was, it was honestly only about two or three months of unemployment, but it motivated me. Um, it really lit another fire up under me that I needed because, wait, hold on, guys. Let me actually make one screen because I, I feel my eyes jumping around at all four. So I'm making one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speak of you. Here we go. So yeah. Um, after after during that unemployment time frame, I really was just grinding Twitch streams. Like I, I think one day we did like a twenty hour stream or something like that, and it was wow. just work, just like wow. developing this game, trying to come up with like what this concept was. And um, it finally hit me. I was I was for the first time I was planning on going to an NXT takeover. Um, I was going to a Ring of Honor show. It was like WrestleMania weekend. It was out here in Florida, so I was excited. Yeah. I'm like, Let's go! Got my tickets, meet and greets, and everything. And I was just thinking, I'm like, man, wouldn't it be cool if um, if fans could be at an event and just pull out their phones and kind of compete against each other or something? Like something with wrestling at wrestling events I wanted to do, and I didn't know what it would be at that time frame. And Markout is what it became. Um, slowly but surely, Markout is the evolution of what Spot Callers was. And um, I couldn't be happier with how it's going so far, honestly. Okay. And, and since the last interview, you made tremendous progress on this game. Um, it's been damn near two years since that last interview. So, I mean, how how do you feel the progress of the game has went this past two years? Um, that's another thing. It was I'm the type of person where a project is never really complete to me. Okay. Um, I, I always want to keep adding things and adding features and adding moves and adding all this. Like, I was literally just going to be baking this game for at least 10 years. Like, it would have been a 10-year project had I had it my way, where I was at and every single thing into it. Um, so I had to put a strict deadline on myself of August 26th so that I could ensure no matter what, I was finishing this project. Um, so as far as development goes, this is the fastest and most rapid development has been outside of that two-month frame when I was unemployed because – during that time frame, I had all the time in the world. I had I was right. now I'm back working full time. I'm fathering full time. Everything's at home, trying to help out uh, wherever I can with other work too. I also do other work at um uh, church uh, for my father in law, and 
it's really just been the most to like pedal to the metal time frame. Yeah, for you're me. a busy guy, huh? Yeah, crazy busy. And it's one of those things where I um sorry I'm saying um a lot. I'm I'm also tired, but it's okay, man. you're a new father. It's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. So it was really honestly the past four weeks. Cause right when my son was born, I told my wife, I'm like, I, I gotta put a date out. I was like, the game is nowhere near done, but I have to put a date out. Otherwise this project is gonna keep going. And I have more things I wanna do. Like this isn't the only thing I wanna work on, but you have a guilt when you work on something, like you wanna start a project and you know you didn't finish the first project. It's like a weird feeling you get where you just feel like you're not finishing anything. So um, once I set that date, progress just like flew by. So many new features, even just today, I was coming up with different ideas and um, you know getting ready to, for my day. And I'm like, man, I need to make it because for instance, right now in the game, you can collect cars, wrestling cars. And um, I was making it where you can discover cars, but I hadn't really figured out what cars need to be discovered yet. And I was like, well, if it's a level system in the game, like an actual ranking system based on your um, experience points, why not make it where certain cars are just locked until you hit a certain level? Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that's the concept that I decided to decided, you know, just brush my teeth this morning and I already implemented it <laughs> today. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I have to go ahead and set the values up for every card so that they know what um, level they'll be unlocked there. So it's just stuff like that. I'll keep having ideas and I would never finish it, but I, I'm on a mission right now. Definitely Good. Good, man. So I, I actually have a question. So I, I know a little bit about your game. Um, and maybe for people like me who don't know too much since, because I didn't know you had changed the name to Mark Out, but you know that the other card, Super Card? Uh -huh. So what would make this different from that? Oh, I got you. I'm, I'm thinking about the key talk. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, really it's, so I'll give you these things as similarities, and I think it'd be easier for me to break it down like that. So you have a card game, a collectible card game, and you have wrestling. That's it. That's the only similarities between these two games. Outside of that, Supercard primarily focuses on using the wrestlers as cards themselves. Um, you okay. can, and I, I haven't played too much of Supercard, but I did play it years ago. And um, as far as I can remember, you actually collect the wrestlers who are cards, um, and then you battle with those. You just, and it, it kind of auto battles. I mean, you choose your card and it, kind of auto battles for the most part, I think. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's pretty much like an auto battle. I used to mess with it, but uh -huh. it made my brain numb, so I stopped messing with it. Yeah, and that's the system I was trying to get away from. I'm, I wanted to actually focus on allowing you to put on a match. So I like to think of Mark out as you're um, making a wrestling match, you're just using cards. Like, I really wanted to focus to be on the move. So every single card in Mark out is a different move. So you'll have an arm drag, you'll have, uh, I'm, I'm kind of spoiling some moves in the game right now, but it's fine. Um, you have a, a, a suplex, you'll have, um, I will suplex, vertical suplex, German suplex, all different types of cards. And when you start up a match, it'll just pull five random cards from your hand. Um, you can, at the beginning of the match, actually choose if you want to replace any of them and it'll auto replace and it goes out of it. And then a match starts. Like you actually see a 3D camera spinning around your wrestlers and you say, okay, well, let me go ahead and throw an arm drag out. You throw that card out. As long as you have enough energy uh, resource to use it, you'll actually see your three-dimensional wrestler do um, an arm drag. And then, you know, the points get updated like that. And you can keep going, actually, if you have enough energy. You can throw out another card afterwards. Yeah. Um, but that's really what the focus of it is. So it's, it's like less on user input and more on the abilities of the cards that you have. Exactly. Got gotcha. you. Okay. But I also like me coming. So I actually, Dre might uh, remember, but I used to be really active in the community as far as the community creations. I used to create arenas, create wrestlers, all of that stuff. And that's what kind of led me on this path here. But one of the things that I really wanted to focus on in this game was allowing you all to feel some form of freedom um, as far as being able to create your own cards. So this is a card game that actually gives you a suite where you can build out custom cars. And I'm not talking about just saying, okay, um, I'm going to take some preset poses that I already have for a vertical suplex and name this car like vertical suplex too. I mean, you can actually pose out a full car, like from, from 10 frames worth of a car and make whatever. Wow. wow. 
and then it just picks a picture. Like the only thing that's kind of limited is the images, but that I don't I don't think that's too big of a deal right this second because I plan on doing a mobile port at some point. I don't want to make it too complicated. But yeah, you can actually create your own cars, create your own pose, and then you can um, use your car in battle. So once you create a car, it actually goes to a store and you have to go and purchase specific copies of your car before you can put them in your deck and use them in a match. Oh. And then I have it rate locks, I mean, um, locks on value so that you can't just max out a car. Um, let's say you made a car, you can't just make the strongest car. All of the cars you create are basic. Like they're really, really generic because that's my for it. Like that's really what my focus is, is going to be providing you new cars and make sure the cars have levels like that. And um, that's really what I want to make. Um, Sorry about that. Out. Oh, good. So, yeah, that's just one of the things. Like, I'm happy about that feature because, for me, it allows you all to create moves. And if I like a move and you've uploaded it, I can go download the move and pop it in the game as a new card. And everybody gets to enjoy, you know, creations that you've made. But you also don't have to feel limited to the moves that you have. You say, okay, well, I'm just throwing out a wrestler. Um, say Pentagon. He, he, he pulls out a new move nobody has ever seen before, like, you know, ever. Um, you could actually go in and recreate that move in the game. And it's funny because Fire funny. Pro wound up doing something similar, but I actually had this concept <laughs> in the game when it was spot callers. Like, in 2019, you were already able to make moves and stuff. So when Fire Pro released, I'm like, ah, crap. That was <laughs> one of my selling points. Um, I rather you could do that. All right. Well, we was just uh, talking about uh, different wrestling games with uh, create a create a move or create a finisher. But my question to you, with uh, being able to create um, a move in the game, is this going to be like a base move, or can this also be a finisher? Uh, it it it'll be both. So sorry, out of breath now, I ran. But uh, <laughs> so finishers are an interesting thing. I'm actually still trying to make sure I'm implementing it the right way. Um, I have a solution in there right now. I'm just not, I'm like a perfectionist. Like, I just don't know if it's going to be how I want to keep it. But as of right now, in a deck, you can specify any card as long as it's not a modifier. And I can go into more detail about these different card types. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's not a card that can't be played on its own, you can make it a finisher. Um, and when it's a finisher, it just does double damage when it's called. So if you create a card, you can make that a finisher. Okay. Well. All right. yeah. Is it going to be like specialty cards? Like, if, for instance, like if you were playing Uno, you have the wild card. Is there something you're implementing like that um, that is going to affect gameplay in a dramatic way? Like, say, if you're kind of getting beat down a little bit and you got this card, it could bring you back. Yeah. So I'm going to, this is going to be like an ever evolving thing with the different cards that I bring in. But as of right now, I have at least three cards that I like that. I call them uh, markout moments. Okay. So, one of them is uh, Day of Reckoning was one of my favorite games growing yeah. up. And there was something in there called a momentum shift. I don't know if you remember yes. this. Mm, yeah. But uh, yeah. that was a card I always enjoyed. And um, you can, you'll can you be able to use these cards at any moment in time. You can only have one markout moment card in your deck at a time, though. So you can't just spam all these different ones. So that's one. Um, and I'll give you a, a little kind of preview on the other one. I don't want to spoil all of them. But another one allows you to swap something with your opponent. So that's, that's all I'm, I'm going to say. You, you swap something with your opponent. Um, now, when, it, you say, like when you say one markout card per, card per deck, does that mean there's only one per player? So if one person gets it, the other one doesn't? Or does that mean in your own individual deck as a player, so each player has the potential to have one of those cards? Yeah, each player has the potential okay. to have a card. Because okay. yeah. otherwise, if I made it like one person, it could, it could spoil the experience if somebody Yeah, like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and get this out the way. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you never know. That's the thing. Like, if 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 the game is out and and people are really like, hey, I think it would be cool if, let's say, if my myself and Sean and we were fighting against each other and yeah. Sean got to start the match. Well, would it be fair for me to then be the one that gets the markout card? because he got an advantage starting the match. Right. Like these are different things that have to get ironed out. And that's the reason I'm doing yeah. early access because I'm the only one developing the game. And it's yeah. like less than the curse because I have creative freedom, but I also have creative freedom to fail yeah. <laughs> at my ideas because I'm the only one, you know, really trying to apply the ideas themselves. So I only know what I like. I only know what makes sense to me, but I might not be in the majority all the time. And 
nobody's going to agree with every idea, but I'm always open to them and seeing what makes the most sense. Speaking of starting on the match, are you doing some sort of like randomizer coin flip to see who gets to go first or like how's that going to work? Right now, I, I actually had to decide this since I'm doing um, online mode. I've been working on that this week. And I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. I, I saw Dre post a video a couple, it might have been two weeks ago or a week ago at this point in the time where he was saying, you said something about like playing cards, playing a card game and virtual pro wrestling or it was something, I, or Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you um, um, unlock uh, cards, it's it's very strange because it's in Japanese. I can't read it all, yeah. but um, it's yeah. like basically like, um, uh, like, you know how like uh, the rock, paper, scissors thing? Yeah. And it should be like three choices and, you know, wow. one overdo the other one and both of you pick and mm -hmm. whoever one, you know, is better than the others, that's who you can decide okay. to go first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the image, like I saw the thumbnail for it. I'm like, I need him to drop this video because I need to see <laughs> what he did. I couldn't Google it, I couldn't YouTube, and then he had it set to premiere like a day yeah. later. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Because I waited to 7 p.m. that night, and I was like, oh, wait, no, he didn't drop it tonight. It's tomorrow. But yeah. I did, when I looked at that image, that immediately came to my head. I was like, where could I use something like that where it's like a rock, paper, scissors aspect? And I think this might be the place is in the yeah. beginning of the match. Yeah. That makes it fair 100 percent and right. i definitely think that might be the route to go and if it is i just I, need, I just need to implement it i mean that's all i need to do at this point matter of fact need to take a note <laughs> <laughs> when you have a thousand ideas running through your head all yeah. the time you have to keep track oh, of course. everyone that is worth keeping track of i'll say <laughs> definitely there are it's many true. that i have on here where i'm like I put like fire emojis, typing it to myself, thinking, oh, this is gonna be nice. And then I wound up going back and looking at the list. I'm like, nah, this is going season two. I can't do it right now. That's gonna, that's gonna slow it down. Um, so the idea was the rock, paper. I'm, I'm like so serious, by the way. Yeah, like rock, paper, scissors, you know, something like that. Or like try to make it like something that more is involved with wrestling. Like a high flyer could be the power and a technical could be the high flyer, something like that, or, you know. Yeah, I'm messing around. That, that can definitely be, you know. But, um, hey, we, we're here to give out ideas. <laughs> but um, the sound is a big thing in wrestling and in the wrestling product. Um, tell me how you plan on using this in the game, like crowd noise, uh, move sound effects, music, commentary, possibly. So this is something that will continue to get improved um, through early access because it's not as fluid as I want it to be right this second. But I've had to, any money I've had, I've had to dedicate to other things um, in the project, like art or custom designs or things like that. So as far as audio, I made the audio uh, for the most part. Um, different things that I didn't make are like, if you drop a card or click a button, I didn't make those sound effects. But as far as like, the you'll hear it like a thigh slap, that's me clapping my hands together. <laughs> or, uh, or it's a couple of them where, and you can pick the sound effect when you make your move. So this is probably where you would actually hear them because I haven't added them to every move yet. But there are some where it's just like a whoo. And that, that's just me with my mic just, you know, whoo. <laughs> so, hey, that's something. Um, oh, then there's another one. So I was a fan, big fan of Tommy Yen. And he, he does his, whatever he does before he kicks sometimes. And I, I did yeah. try my, my hand at that. Um, but they are in the game. Um, and then there are additional, so 15 additional sound effects I paid. Uh, man, John Kernan, that's his name. John Kernan, he's actually one who developed the whole soundtrack for the game. Hmm. And um, I paid him a couple weeks ago to just create, like I had a list of 15 sound effects. It was like, including a table smash, a, a ladder attack, a chair hit, just these different sound effects that I could add to the game. And he said these will be ready in July. So that's why I'm saying like early access, I'll have to really flesh out the audio because right now it doesn't have that oomph I'm really looking for. And I really don't have as many um, audio effect engineers that pop up off the blue. Like, hey, I'm here to you know work with you. So I have to kind of take what I get at the moment until I have time to re refresh everything. Okay. And, and so talk to me also about the tier packs. Um, what are included in them? Is it just the moves? Is there anything else possible characters? Uh, what could we expect in the lower tier moves and what can we expect in the higher tier moves? Yeah, I got you. So first, like the game does not really focus on the characters at all. 
So okay. I want to just go ahead and throw that out there because I know with um, Supercar being out and focusing on characters, I've had a lot of questions about that. Um, so you really won't find too often that I'm basing tiers and including characters with it necessarily. Um, I'm just working on a creative rest of the mode where you can kind of create your own thing. Okay. And I'll have like randomly generated generic characters right the second. Okay. But as far as the tiers, and I, I should have came up with a much better name for this, but it's a work in progress as everything is. Um, there are about 12, 13, including custom cards, because I made that its own tier as well, um, tier list. And what that basically means is it's just how I group the cards together, certain cards. So for instance, the first deck tier that you, um, I mean, first card tier that you have is starter, which we revealed on Monday. When is this interview going live, by the way? Um, hmm. I mean, it's it won't be Monday, right? No, no, no. All right, so I can tell you the next one then, um, as well. So, um, the starter tier is really just moves you to start with. So, if you were in training, you might have like I think an arm drag, vertical suplex, hip toss, little simple things like that, a drop kick, just things you might learn in class. Now, as you go up in different tiers, you start getting those more impactful moves. So, the next tier, and I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I think is the um, typical tier. And this is just cars that you would see thrown around, but they aren't basic cars. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to think if I have them off the top of my head, but I don't, but it's like a, di a diving card is definitely in the typical. I know for sure I have a diving card in there, but I just have so many, it's over a hundred cars. So I, me trying to recall where everyone is, is like, yeah trying to remember a math formula from third grade that wasn't like your basic multiplication, addition, subtraction, it's just hard. But I will tell you, the tiers are not all those basic names. So it's not just starter, typical, common, da 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 Those are just like the first five tiers I, I named like that. Then I started getting kind of freaky with it. So we got cards that are based on like the Japanese style. We got cards that are based on high flying. And that was one, I, I actually give you the name for that one. So that tier is the incoming tier. So that one is just dive attacks. Like every card in that tier is a diving attack. Uh, we have one called uh, snap, snap, tap, or nap, which is submissions, like all types of submissions. Yeah. It's just a bunch of different, uh, I have one called suplex machinery. That's all suplexes, they, uh, all oh, different types of suplexes. So these are just the tiers that I'm starting with since it's, you know, I, I didn't even put every move that I made in the game yet. I want to keep on making more tiers and adding on to it. And um, yeah, you'll, you'll hear more about it. The reason why I'm not really tripping on me with telling you the names of them is because you'll find out eventually. I mean, the game is at least two months. It's not a secret. It's just something that we kind of give to hype people up because it's kind of hard without revealing every card in the game and yeah. showing, hey, this is five cards in the game right off rip. So um, yeah. And the tiers, that's all they are for is just a group of cards. They don't do anything past that. Um, something additional that actually distinguishes a card, though, is a rarity type. So I have a physical card. Let me pull up a physical card. One sec. OK. Not a rarity. <laughs> uh, so check this out. I actually came, I actually built this one out by hand, these cards right here. Oh. oh I built three nice ones. That's, that's lucky. So, for instance, and this might be a typical card right here, Enziguri. That's a bad card, actually. I don't like the edge on that one. Here's a bad one. <laughs> so, as you can see, this is a level three card. This is perfect. We can actually talk about stuff on the card now. Okay. So, as you notice, you can tell the tier by the background. So, every single um, card tier has its own distinct background and look and feel. So you will be able to tell what tier it is just by looking at the background. So that's how I was able to say, okay, this is a typical, because this is a red card. Um, this, is, this is an um, insecure card. So the things that you'll notice here are, my camera's flipped, <laughs> but uh, this right here, this is basically your energy resource that's required to pull this move off. So you would, you would need to have four energy resources to pull this move off. And you get um, one energy source every time you have a turn. So each turn you have, you get another one. So if you want to save up for this, because you start at zero or you start at one when it's your turn, you'll want to pass four times or pass three times before you get to this. Um, there will eventually probably be some cards that actually allow you to kind of bypass that and, 
and get additional. But right now, I'm just keeping it simple. I don't want to add too much and then start taking stuff out because that looks worse if I add stuff and take it out. People are like, hey, yeah, you make the game worse. So uh, we'll just mess around with that. The other thing here you'll see is a rarity type. So each car has a different rarity based on their rank. So cars also ranked. It's just not on the printed version. But cars are ranked from um, top to bottom. They have a number on them showing at their max strength if, with the um, at their max strength. Man, I'm trying to think how to word this. But let's say if it's 100 cards, you're going to have a strongest card. You're going to have a best card. And that number is going to be showing up at the top. Okay. Yeah. So that's how that works. Um, then the level three. So you can upgrade cards. So every card you get will start at level one. And I have examples here. So this is this is just perfect. I couldn't have did this on purpose if I wanted to. So <laughs> you have a one out of three, you notice right here, right? Mm -hmm. Now you see that only takes two energy resources to pull off. So if you have a base sense of gear, you can pull it off just skipping one turn. Um, and then you see you have the attacker and you have what looks like an arrow. That's momentum. So it tells you how much momentum you get. The more momentum you get, the closer you get to a finisher. So you get 100 momentum, you get a finisher. And then the victim um, with the heart, that's their spirit. So the objective of the game is to get your opponent's spirit zero. Once it's zero, you win. You win the match. So it's pretty. It's a pretty simple concept. But you can see the difference between the damage <laughs> and what it costs you. Like, yeah. If, if your opponent has fifty health, you might be better off just saving up four times and hitting them with one of these. Or you know, you might think, hey, I could just waste the turn on this. I mean, it just depends on how you want to play. Okay. Now, now well, talk to me a, a little bit about um, just as the characters themselves, because you were just showing off how much, you know, spirit that you would need to beat them. Will because it's not character based, how would you go about implementing the 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 hit the hit power system or, you know, how much power each character each person gets? Is it just 100 or does it fluctuate? Yeah. So that's something that I've um, adjusted a couple of times. And I think the best approach for me, because I have a mode where it's just exhibition. So that's you just fight anybody that you have on your roster. Um, that's not ranked. So those wrestlers that are going to be there will already have a base health. Um, what I'm considering, though, is and I think this makes the most sense. When you start up a match, I will it will look at your health and base it based on your health that you have as a wrestler because I think that would keep it more engaging. It wouldn't be a thing of, okay, well, I have a hundred, this, this person has a hundred, I only have 30, I'll never be able to beat this person. Or um, this person has 30 and I'm at a hundred now, so I'll never lose against this person. It needs to be something that constantly moves with the player. So right now I'm doing that with um, something I call grind mode. And that's literally like my version of a career mode where it's no storyline or anything in that but you um, have different promotions that you can wrestle for. You have to unlock, you have to get to a level before you can wrestle at them. And then you move up the ranks and then you try to win the title. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but that allows you to gain XP so you can buy new card packs and then unlock new cards or do whatever you want to do with it. I'm not rewarding it in an exhibition because it's too easy because you can actually set your opponent's deck real time. You can set your deck. It's not something where a move set, and that's why I say the wrestlers don't matter as much. The move sets are not tied to the wrestlers. So if I wanted to have a match and I wanted to use my skin, the skin that just looks like me, under my uh, wrestler select, I'll actually have something that says deck and it'll have arrows next to it. And I can actually choose which deck I want to use at that moment in time. And since that's the case, somebody could easily just go create a really, really crappy deck, like five cards that suck and give it to their opponent every time and just spam up winning. <laughs> just spam mm, up winning. Yeah. Spam okay. up the money. So I was like, okay, well, for exhibition, you get nothing. Um, you get a little, you know, XP for it, but it won't be anything crazy. You really get the XP from um, online, so competing against other people real time, and then also from the ground mode. And the ground mode is, as I just mentioned, um, my version of career mode. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I actually sat on my son's bedroom floor weeks ago and came up with an entire story. Like, I actually have a story that, the, that will be in the game, but it won't be upon release. I want to make sure I'm able to do it um, the way I envision it, because otherwise it won't have the same, you know, feeling about it. But definitely a story, and it involves traveling the world and wrestling in different promotions. So. Okay, and that was kind of one of the next questions that I was going to have, like after the initial release, um, what possible updates you would have in this game. So that would be one of the um, one of the updates for this game afterwards. Is like a, a story mode. Definitely. Uh, so I have a couple in my head, and actually, let me go off my list that I wrote because I might forget something. But 
just as ideas. Um, so I have health replenishing cards. That's something I want to add in the future. So let's say if you did get hit with a 16 damage card and you want to just get some of your health back, I want to have cards that actually do that. It's possible now. I just, like I said, I don't want to throw too many cards into the mix and confuse people or, you know, do too much on it. Um, I have, like, add a poster in the back of a locker room. That's something simple. I write all types of stuff on here. Uh, <laughs> so I have one thing on here. It says animated cards for GOAT tier. So that's the highest tier is GOAT tier. Mm -hmm. uh, for rarity. For rarity. I'm sorry. For, for GOAT rarity, not tier. But for that, I think it'd be cool because right now the cars are just like the images and they just scale up and down if you hover over them. But wouldn't it be dope if you could actually see because the animation style I'm doing is like a um, almost like stop motion type thing where you, you're kind of just looking at pictures like steals and the camera rotates around. it. But it'd be cool if for the, the best cars in the game, I actually had it animate showing that move being played um, instead of just that static. Now, I've been able to pull off, like, it's definitely possible to just take a little more work, but I've been able to pull it off because it's something in the game called card. And this is something I came up with last week. It's called um, card innovation. I mean, no, 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 I'm sorry. That, I switched the name of it. I'm a, do you all want to know about these features? Yeah. I think I should yeah. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let's go into detail. All right. So I only have, <laughs> I only have these two cards, these three cards. So I'm gonna, you have to use your imagination a little bit. But... Card fusions are um, going to be the simplest things to explain first. So a card fusion takes, so let's say I have an Enziguri and I have an Enziguri. This is going to be really boring. But let's say if I have two max style Enziguri, so that would have been the level three cards. If I have two of those, and it could be two of any card. So it could be a max style Enziguri and a max style vertical suplex. But since these are the two, just imagine that. Um, you could actually put these together and they will perform both moves, give all the damage, give all of the stats, all of the stats just combined. Oh, wow. uh, but it takes one card now. So what this does is, first of all, it allows you to free up your deck. So you do, it's a max of 30 cards in your deck. So now if you want to have, you know, like this maxed out card, you don't have to take up an extra two slots for it. So it's deck consolidation. I mean, uh, deck consolidation. <laughs> it's deck consolidation. Um, and it's really cool. Like I really like it. But what happens now is, both animations play on the card. So you'll see it fade in between um, a vertical suplex and an enziguri. It's like a really cool effect. So you know, like that card is maxed. And it'll also um, go up one tier. So once you combine them, since both of these are in the U tier, it'll go up one tier. Um, I mean, one rank. I keep saying tier. It'll go up one uh, rarity. So it, it's just a cool thing to do. I like it. Um, and then it resets the card, and you can buy it from the store. So now you can get an endless supply of that card as long as you have the VC for it. I mean, uh, yeah, VC is called VC in the game. So as you had a virtual currency, you can do that. Um, another thing is the – is it's called card innovation. And this is something I came up with, and this is really how the game kind of got its foot in where it was spot callers. I, I took this concept. But it's being able to merge two cards in real time to create a completely different move. So you'll think about – a vertical suplex and um, think about how you want to get to a superplex. So you wouldn't want to just have a, a superplex in your deck all the time. Like I doubt somebody just wants to keep a superplex. You probably just want to be able, like, just throw out a simple vertical suplex. So this system allows you to do both. You'll be able to either, if you have a vertical suplex card and you have an avalanche modifier card, you'll be able to put both oh, of those cards yeah. together. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's and cool. Superplex. Or let's say, for instance, it's like a moon. So this one, this when it gets kind of cold. So I'm gonna keep adding more of these combinations. But you have a moon sort. You know how many variations of moon sort you're able to do. So yeah. right now in the game, it starts as a standard moon sort. But you have a diving modifier, and you also have a springboard modifier. So if you have one of those, you could turn it into a um, diving moon sort, or you could turn it into a springboard moon sort. So mm -hmm. if you have like three moonsault cards in your deck, you can pull off, like you have like five different types of moves you can pull yes. off. The wow. Um, That's and, cool. the next, and the next part, this is another thing. I added a lot of stuff over the past two weeks. I told you, just grounding on it. So if you have these two cards, these specific two cards in the game, um, you see how it's a level one and a level two? Mm -hmm. You can do this and make this real time. So you'll be oh. able to take a level, like, like take two of the same card merge them together and then combine whatever That's levels that. they get. And it is actually like, it adds so much to the game. And, and, and another thing, as I was playing, I'm like, man, it's like, I, as I was doing testing, cause I gave it away for free, like when it was really ugly and let people just test it out, play it, give me feedback. <laughs> but um, 
something that people were saying. They were like, man. Also, with with you're able to to put the cards together in game, does that unlock the card? Let's say if you don't have it, now you're able to have the card in your deck? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. But no. Um, so every single card in the game, as you can see here um, at the bottom, it's like a unique ID. Mm -hmm. So every single card instance is its own thing. It's like you have like real time copies of cards. <clears throat> so when you do something in a match, it doesn't keep the card like that. That's just mm -hmm. a match. So you'll have every every card you went into the deck with, you also have when you leave, but you won't have any cards that you created in the match. Yeah. Okay. So you still have to unlock it. You still so you won't just get a superplex because you use the superplex. Hey, I'll, that's you know, nice because hey, that gives you a little bit of uh, the ability to have a stronger card without actually having it unlocked. Exactly. So some people might not realize, oh, I have a one and a two, I can make it three. But somebody might realize, and they have an advantage because they see that. So that's kind of cool. And then the other thing is, I have two cards that are brand new that I can't wait for people to use. Um, it's a level up and a level down card that you can use real time. So if you did have, you know, that level two, but you only had one energy uh, resource left and, you know, you were both close to finishing the match, but you didn't have enough to do this card, you could take that level down card, hit it on this, and then mm -hmm. that level down to level one, and then you can use that card. Or vice versa. If you wanted to have a level two, let, let's <clears throat> say you want to stay in the middle at a level two for all the cards because – you don't want to have the card too strong where it takes too long to play, but you also want to do more damage than one, but you want to be able to be flexible going up or down. You can use a level up card on level two real time and take it up to level three if you have enough energy to just go ahead and end that match. So I added those two because I'm like, it gives people, because once you upgrade a card, you can't downgrade the card. It's, it's permanent. Okay, so I have a question for that, right? Say uh -huh. you have two level two cards, but you want to do that combination to get to that level three. You can't, right? So could you potentially use a level down on one of them so that you could then combine it to make a three? No, you can still do it. It'll just max it. Oh, so okay. It go to the max. So it, you kind of just take the L on it, basically. But right. it will so work. Two, the card a two, two would become a three. Yep, yep. I got okay. a system where it won't go past that, that threshold of however okay. many you said on that limit. So if you had, um, let's say if you had a level two and a level two, and it's two out of three, you can go ahead and merge those. Into okay, that's good. So then you don't have oh, to okay. waste the level down card. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you were also talking about, you know, in this game, you want to give the players the ability to create their own wrestler. Talk to me a little bit about that feature and um, how deep does that go? You know, where do you want to start off with and where do you, uh, you know, possibly want it to go? As of now, it sucks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you guys. <laughs> me being a car, like, I, I used to literally sit up hours creating people. It's not 2K. It's not, it's nothing like that. Um, characters don't even have faces in the game. I mean, it's literally just slender man looking people. But um, the thing that I did, I, I am trying my best to do, is make it where you can at least make somebody identifiable. So you'll have um, the option to add hair. Um, I got oh crap, I got to get some three D hair models made. I just thought about that as I said here. <laughs> I, I have like four. I won't. I won't have to worry about that part. <laughs> <laughs> got it easy. So um, yeah, you'll be able to add hair. Um, you'll be able to add, you won't be able to do anything to the face except add facial hair. So there are some 3D beards you could throw on, um, mustache, different things like that. Um, and then you can throw a tires on. So it's not a paint tool. It's not an upload your own custom texture right now. It's really, really basic. And um, it, al it always leaves room for growth. But honestly, it was like last priority for me. Like my, my number one. And I, that's why I'm still not done. Like I have, that's my, I think I'm gonna do that in two weeks. I'm gonna get focused on that. But I gotta finish online mode. I wanna finish grind mode. I wanna finish the other modes that are like things that people will be playing the most. And then I'll put a little more effort into like finishing that creative wrestling system. Cause I, re, I redid it. That's the other thing. When you build a project over so long, you learn so much and you mm -hmm. learn different, more efficient ways to do things. Like last, like two days ago, I just learned something like, I'm, I'm on the couch in shock. I'm, and my wife's like, what? Well, I'm like, I didn't realize that I could do it like that. I'm like, I've been using the, the, this system the wrong way the whole time, and I could have just done that. So it, it's definitely an eye-opening experience as you continue to um, learn these things. Like, all right, I can implement it like that. So I had to tear that entire system down. I deleted everything, and I'm like, all right, create it from scratch. It's easier to delete everything when you do a software. Like, you don't even want to try to muck around with all the stuff you did. Yeah. You know what the vision is, 
you just rebuild it and put it back together how you want it. And that's that's what I had to do. So I'm getting there. I got some bugs in it, but I'm 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 gonna iron them out and um, go from there. Oh yeah, and then some of the tires is I'm not ripping. I'm not like actually taking the tires. But I'm taking the tires, basically. Like you could tell, like if you wanted to make like a wheel osprey, it'll be close enough to make a wheel osprey. Like, okay, that type okay. of view. That makes sense. That's makes you sense. You got to use your imagination. But you know, there there was also a question that I did see someone give to you on Twitter as well. Um, you know, even though this is, you know, you're still, you know, making the game as you go. Do you plan on adding women to the game, possibly? Trust me, this is something I think about all the time. Um, and the thing, the thing that I struggle with is I'm still trying to really find out the best way to adjust that model that I have in the game um, because of how I'm doing animation. I, I don't have a rig. I have a rig on it, but it's not your traditional animation where everything, like in Unreal, you kind of retarget things and it'll move with size. Because everything is so tied to specific location, like I'm rotating bones, putting you in a certain location, um, I would have to figure out what the possible issues that could arise with that is. But the solution I came up with is to just give a morph on that character with a more feminine shape, which is always possible. Um, but that'll probably definitely be a level two, a, a, a level two thing that I do a season two of these two. Um, because as I said, I just haven't put too much thought into these characters. That's the same character model, by the way, that I started Spy Callers with. That's the same exact model. Mm -hmm. Only thing I did was I re UV'd it. I cleaned it up a little bit and put it back in game. But I, I literally have that as a task is to either replace the model or find a way to update it. It's just that's the thing that I'm running into and why I haven't put too much into it right now is because I just don't know how I want to handle it. And I'm being honest with you guys. I'm transparent about it because I really just don't know. Like, I don't know everything. <laughs> I don't know how I'm <laughs> going to address doing something with this model. Um, another thing is I had characters in it, like with faces at some point in Spark All This, but... First of all, I created this from a completely new project. Um, and I took, like I took spot callers and deleted things, but it was like the old spot callers before I had creating an arena, created like all the stuff that was in that one. So I had a lot of the base stuff. And then on top of that, it was, it wouldn't be mobile friendly as, as much as I wanted to with all the morphs in it. Third, it just didn't pull off the same effect. Like it was some, I don't know, it was weird. Like seeing these characters with no faces pulling off moves felt like my style. Like, it just really felt identifiable. Like, if somebody sees that, mark out. You hear me? Yeah, it's unique. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so when I had the characters in it, it just felt like an imitation wrestling game. And I I, was, mm. I don't want people to try to say, this is 2K, this is not 2K. Like, I don't even want people to go in their head and compare it to 2K. Because it's not. It's not 2K. I don't have millions of dollars. I don't have a whole team of 100 people. We haven't been doing this for 15 years. It's nowhere near what the level is. But actually, 20, I forgot. It was like 2000 when 2K started making games, I think, or before that. But it's not that. So I'm trying to kind of go as far away from it as I can in different ways, but mm -hmm. still make it a wrestling game that's fun. Okay. Um, talk to me a little bit about the UI design. Um, I seen that it, it changed up a little bit. Um, talk to me about what was the mindset going into it initially and where you're at now as far as the UI goes. When I designed it originally, it was ugly. It's hideous. <laughs> I, I'm not a UI developer. Like, mad, mad respect to everybody who is. Who is. Um, I focus on, I learn enough to get a task done. That's all I do. Even with the cards, I learned enough to know how to print a card, print a card, laminate the inside of the card, and cut the card. That's it. I'm not doing any, I'm not doing holographics and all that. I'm like, I, it's not me. I'm wasting time. I know it's people that can do it, but it, it's not me. Um, and that, that was the thought with the UI. I always knew the game was ugly. Like I, I, I will consistently tell you, it was very, very ugly. And I even put it in the build. I'm like, this is a ugly version. Because I didn't want people thinking that I thought it was nice. I'm like, no, I know what this is. Just tell me how the function works. Um, yeah. But going into it, I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I'm the type of person where if I have a concept in my head, I can sketch it out. Like I'm, I'm pretty decent at sketch. I got a sketchbook. I won't get up again because I keep getting up and interrupting the meeting. But um, <laughs> I have a sketchbook that I just sketch out concepts on. And I had designed the original logo in a way when I did a mark out where it was just still kind of, you know, whatever it was basically. So, uh, you know, Defrat, uh from the call community, he, yeah. he, he's like, 
very, very experienced with these different elements of um, creative endeavors, I'll say. And he works with the company. I don't know if he owns it or what exactly is going on, but um, Get Wrecked Labs. And I just kept seeing them post them, their posts because he would retweet them and it just keep popping up. I'm like, man, that's slick. Like it was just always Twitch graphics redesigned. I'm like, that's slick. Like that's what I need for this game. And when I came to him, I'm like, hey, I need UI redesign for this game. Go crazy. I'm like, whatever you want to do. I'm like, he, so they had me take screenshots of every single screen in the game um, at the current state. I sent them over and within probably a couple weeks, well, he'd already started redesigning the logo basically like a week after um and a couple weeks later they were like he was like hey i want you know i want to go ahead and send this over to you wow drop the files i'm like perfect mm. that's all i need took what he gave me i made like little minor changes like you wouldn't even notice it but it's like um uh i can't even remember off the top of my head it's like really really minor things for new screens if i mm. create a new screen you would probably notice it but they they put that thing together in the background like the background is different but they put it together and they, they gave it to me and said, here. And as I started design, oh, and the main menu, I actually redesigned the main menu myself because I was going somewhere with it. I thought in my head I was going somewhere with it. And I looked at it, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, this is horrible. Like, it's just not how, and I keep saying I like, but I'm just, this is not what I want at all. So what I wound up doing was I was on a Twitch stream redesigning. Like I spent a lot of development time on Twitch. You can just watch mm -hmm. You could basically watch the game from mid beginning. Like, no, you can actually watch it from the beginning. Mm. I started Twitch before I left to come to Florida. I started working on it a little bit. It was really, really early, but I started it there as fire callers and then I kept working. But you can see I was on Photoshop and I knew the color. I knew I wanted an icon on there, like a hero image of a wrestler. And I knew what font we were using now because they came up with a whole style guide for me. So I knew what font we were using. I knew the button style. And I just wanted to know, I'm like, how can I put this together where the main menu doesn't just look kind of bland and I have more vision? So I started messing around and came up with that, what you see now, which is mm. the main menu cascading down with the different options and then the rest are coming in from the side. They made the overlay, layout, everything. It's just, it's amazing. I, re I recommend working with them. I work, I work with so many people. That's the other thing. This is going to be a tweet when the game releases <laughs> because the credit section of people I got to work with on this game, I'll just drop a few. Rich Art, I mean, Rich Baker Art, he made the backgrounds for the game. So the backgrounds for the tiers that you see, he actually created. As I mentioned, the frat with um, his team bringing in all of the art, uh, Righteous doing the move set. He did the base move set values for the game. Working with um, Jenna, or Gina, I don't know how to pronounce it, J-E-N-A, to yep, build a yeah. custom new legacy arena in the game. Like he, He's just building it out in a 2K and then gonna send me the concepts and I'll rebuild it from what he is. Uh, working with Ketcho Wrestling or Ketcho Mania, I think Ketcho he Mania, yep. He's designing the custom built for the game to be used in the game. It, it's so many people, I can't even think of it, but Gatdaw even had a hand in helping me out with just different advice. Like he's the closest developer I've been to, um, been with as far as developers I speak with. Like we and him speak all the time. Cause first of all, we're both solo deals as well. And we kind of have, a different look on everything. It's kind of weird. We kind of like the black sheep of, of it. I'm more the black sheep, I would say, but it's it's weird. It's it's weird. But yeah, a bunch of people just crazy. How many people I got a chance to work with? Okay, like the the thing is like that really excites me about this, and especially with you, you know, just saying it right now, is that this, you know, this is a community project where it's a bunch of people, you know, are coming together to like really get the ball rolling on this project because mm -hmm. you know they see value in it and you're doing a service to the wrestling games community because you're giving us another option this is what i always say like and it's yeah. just it's just the truth like you're giving us another option of a of a wrestling game to play out there and it doesn't have to be the cookie cutter 2k game that right. we all have gotten tired of you know what i'm saying so just from myself and i'm sure from Sean and Ken like you know we do definitely appreciate the hard oh, yeah. work and the years that you're putting in on getting this game done, man. Oh, I'm, definitely. I appreciate y'all, honestly. It's it's one of the things, this is the other thing, as I mentioned about the, the solo dev aspect of the um, double-edged sword, I would say. No, no, that's not what I said. Whatever <laughs> 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 um, 
bittersweet problem. But I don't know how to feel about the game until I see people play the game. Because as I said, I have ideas in my head where I'm like, okay, this could be cool. But I'm like, I don't even know if this game is fun for people. Like I'm spending so much time building it that I don't know if it's going to be fun for everybody else. But when I get the support, and it's, it's many times where I wanted to just really give up on the project, especially when Virtual Basement came out and it was really just spot callers still. I was really just like, man, they're going to do everything. I mean, they, they're getting all the talent. They're going to they're build an arena stuff. Everything that I wanted to do in the game, like promotion mode, I was going to build all of that stuff in there. And it was really just when they came on the scene, I was like, all right, I could be soft and really just be crying in the corner, mad because they coming out with a game. Or I could be like, you know what? It's a, it's it's millions of people out here. My game is different. And I, I have to go 100% in on being different. Mm-hmm. And that's where I went. And that's where I was like, all this extra fat I had to cut. Like creating arena mode. I built a full creating arena mode. Like it's built. It's still on this computer. This is the computer I haven't used in a while. It's still on this computer where you could take Every object, move it around, throw lights in there. I built, I built spot callers, the vision I was going for. I had already started building it. You can make moves, upload them, download them, everything. But mm-hmm. I realized that the game didn't have an identity. And with me mm-hmm. going this full-blown car route, the game now has an identity. And I even came up with three words. I made a little trailer video yesterday. And um, a little mini one, um, Viking Size Gamer, that's my guy. He's actually making a much, much higher quality trailer video. But the three words I came up with were collect, craft, battle. That's what this game is. You collect mm, cards, you craft your decks, or you can craft cards, and you battle other people. It's a simple, simple game that anybody can literally pick up and hopefully get addicted to. And it's not something that you it's just quick, you know, it's not going to be a super card where you just throw a card out and that's the match. You actually have to strategize this match and think about what moves you want to use when. Think about what cards you have left and all these different features. So I'm really just hoping that the community looks at this as a different game and, and really just appreciates, you know, the vision I was going for and, and understanding I was not trying to be a super card, knock off, rip off, none of that stuff. If anything, I heard it's closer to um, Raw Deal, which I haven't played that, but it, it's the same principle of you playing a card game and it's using moves. Um, the big thing with this is, you watch the match. Like, that was something I really, I was like, I want to see the match. And this, I can tell you, I don't know how much time we have, but this game evolved so many times in my head when I was in Michigan. Originally, it was just going to be, I was going to call it like a thousand words because, you know, the saying the pictures work for a thousand words. Yeah. And it was going to be pictures of the moves. Then I was like, nah, I need some more. And I was like, well, what if I just show you doing one pose of a move? And I was like, oh, perfect. That's going to work. And I started implementing. And I was like, wait a minute, no. Nah. Because I was like, well, what if it's a power bomb? But it's like a sit out power bomb, or it's like a last ride power bomb, or it's like a good wrench power bomb. All of these would have the same pose, and it just wouldn't feel special. So I'm like, well, yeah. I need to add at least one move that you could do additionally, one more pose. So then I'm like, okay, but well, let me add a pose after it. And this is all database, real time changes I'm making. I'm like, okay, well, let me make it where you could choose a pose that this goes after. Okay, cool. That works. All right, cool. That works. That works. Oh, right, crap. But now I lock this pose to this move. But a vertical suplex, you can use that starting pose for any different type of move, a brain buster, a jackhammer, That's or true. DDT. Like, I'm like, it's just not, it's not working. And I was like, well, what can I do? Okay, well, how about we switch how this is laid out, make it a list of poses for every single move, and then the moves themselves are another item that contains these poses. And I'm like, That's it. And then as I kept going, I'm still, I'm still figuring it out now. As I, while I was brushing my teeth today, I'm like, I need to figure out how I can send over custom poses. Since you can make custom poses in your game, it's locked to your um, client, like your personal computer. Mm-hmm. And if you want to use that in an online match, I need to find a way to actually send that data over. This is my mm-hmm. first time dealing with anything online. Like I always dreaded it. I ran away from it. I was like, I'm not doing anything online. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm like, I got to give it a try at least. Um, Cause if you have people like New Legacy playing it, and they wouldn't have more than one person in. Like, it, it would just suck to just have to play one. It'd be boring. It would really be boring. So I, I figured out a way. I'm, I, I figured out how I'm going to do it. I, I'm, I basically have two clients. I'm going to tell the server to tell the clients to gather their poses, send them back to the client. I mean, send them back to the server. And then the server is going to make one giant list and send it back to both the clients. So then they'll both have the full list. 
That's how the, that's how I came up with the idea. Now I got to implement it. <laughs> now, long now part. It's the long part, right? <laughs> so well, I'm babysitting because I have to babysit my son after um basically today because my wife she does day shift. I mean she does night shifts. I do day while I'm working. I have the baby, or while I'm trying to get work done, I have the baby. So it's really just I look at him sometimes. I'm like, can you just be quiet, please? And he just not, look at me. Not- my my oldest one is fourteen, and I still have that same conversation. Can you just be quiet? Can you, can you just go sit down somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting you prepared, man. <laughs> and you know, you did speak about this really quickly, but um, recently it has been announced that a uh, Viking size gamer is the community manager for Markout. Um, talk to me uh, a little bit about his role, um, how it came about, and uh, what does he add to the game. Yeah, so essentially, as you probably noticed on Twitter, I suck. I don't have time to tweet. I'm working all the time where I'm with the baby, and it's just really I don't have time to tweet, and then I don't know what to tweet, and then my content is trash because I'm, I'm like an old man sometimes. Instead of me going to get in the screen grab, I pull up my phone like, oh, this is nice now. <laughs> <laughs> and put that up, and then it's, it's just like, well, I really should have done that a different way. And I just noticed that, like, I'm, I'm always trying to observe different things about myself and try to change my habits. And I realized, I'm like, this game is going to flop because I don't have any type of hype being built. People don't have a reason to get behind the game. People don't know who I am. They don't know what the product is. They don't know what the game is. People still don't know what the game is. That's what the trailer will reveal. But I was like, I just need help. So I put it on Twitter. I'm like, I need a community manager. I'm like, I really just need somebody who could have my Twitter and run my Twitter and I, I, did, I still didn't do anything for Instagram. I forgot I had an Instagram. That's how bad it is. Um, but I needed somebody. I'm like, I just need help. And um, I just put the post out there. And back in, he, he is somebody I worked with in the past on the game because he made a, gra- a couple graphics for me for the game. And um, he was – so he's somebody else. I forgot to name him as one of the content creators I worked with. Uh, yeah. But he reached out. He was like, hey, man, I want to work with you. I'm like, I love to work with you. I just don't have money right now. Like, I, I just can't do anything. And he was like, you know, I'm going to do this volunteer for experience. I'm like, you're an angel, man. And we just figured out, you know, we came up with strategy. Like, how can we, what can we focus on? Um, he, he, he came up with a bunch of ideas. And he really pushed on me like I needed to be pushed on. I think every product, every time you have a, a developer who is um, doing everything on their own, you need somebody to keep them in check. And he's really been that person. Like, if I can rate importance of things he's done, that's the most important thing he's done to me because he's brought up questions that I didn't think of. Uh, for instance, the rarity types weren't introduced until we spoke because he was asking me how the tiers work. And it was really just a thing of, wait, I need another thing to make the cars feel special. So let's add t- let's add the rarity types in. And just other things like um, as I was playing the game, I noticed that it was just bland, like, if you merge the car in the game, all it does is when you hover over a car, it shows the car, then you drop it, it replaces the car, but it doesn't do anything. So as you know, working with him, he's all graphic, graphic man, like all the graphics he does, the visual effects. I'm like looking at the stuff and it just clicked in my head that I could make an animation instead. So now when you drop a car, a graphic pops up. And this is actually a fix. I'm gonna explain this fix too, where it pops up and it shows both cars coming in, shaking, pow, and then turning into one car. And it's, it'd be better, but it was something I had to come up with that made it a little better. But this was actually a fix because it's a delay, a little bit of a delay between server and client. And what I realized was I needed something to cover that delay because otherwise the client's cars would be out of sync because it's updated from the server side. You send the server what you want, then it sends back everything. So what I realized was I needed something that happens here to showcase what happened. And that's where the animation idea came from. Was like, okay, well, as soon as you do it, play the animation. By the time the animation is done, go ahead and trigger that update to pull your new cards. And now it works, it's, it's fluid. But yeah, he's, man, I'm telling you, he he helps come up with ideas for Twitter. Uh, he's been making all the videos for the tier packs. Like he made me like five or six. So I have him in the backlog and we released another one too um, on next Monday, um, tier two. And yeah, like connecting me with people. Like I got to connect with um, JB from the supercar community. Um, mm-hmm. And he, that was a connect that he made directly because they knew each other. And he was like, hey, 
from putting the word out there and now we were able to talk and we were able to kind of get on the same page. So he'll be supporting the project as well. So mm. now I'm getting some of the supercar community to start having their eyes on the project because originally it was really just like 2K people who I knew. And I really don't promote as much. Like I don't go on people's Twitters and say, hey, go check out my game. I don't do all of that. Like I really just post my work and I go on Twitch and I, I just work. Like I'm really like low key. And I realized that was one of my worst parts about my development style was I'm so low key that I fly under the radar. And that was one of the bigger things that I wanted to really, you know, try to change up. So him coming on board, we already did. We already hit an additional 300 followers. He's only been on board for a week. So mm. it's definitely helping out a lot. Then Virtual Basement had to come, try to snatch him up. I'm like, come on, can I have something? Can I have something? They can't. <laughs> but, but it was, it's, it's a thing for me where it's like, as much as I wanted to have it to myself, um, it's a blessing and it's amazing to see him have the ability to work with more than one person. Cause you know, with 2K, that whole situation, they basically kicked him out of the program because he was working with me. And it was like, I felt guilt. Cause I'm like, I didn't want that to happen. The reason why he was working with me was so he could get experience to work with them. So it was kind of like, it, it, it defeated the whole purpose. So yeah. when, when, you know, when we spoke about it and I kept telling him like, you know, this is just, uses as an opportunity to keep whatever I said. It was just some type of encouragement. I don't want to cap on here. Like, I said something, I did it. But it was just some type of encouragement. And um, next thing I know, he's saying, hey, virtual basement hit me up. This person followed. This person followed. This person. I'm like, let's go. You know, it's just like one of the, like, you see one of your people win. And that's really what it was. Like, I, I really felt like he was winning. So I'm like, him doing a virtual basement game, that's going to give him a ton of different exposure. I won't necessarily say more. It, we will give him more if virtual basement is bigger, but um, then I'm diminishing my project. So I would say it'll give him. You're a part, you're a part of his ascend. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm a stepping stone. I'm the low key to, to, to their Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go through me first. Oh, um, man. But you, so, you know, you do have this game set to come out August 26th. When are you going to start doing play testing for it? July. July. Okay. Do so, you have a, a date set for a lot? A lot. A lot. It'll probably actually be August. Okay. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to explain why. And it sucks that it has to be so soon. I mean, so close. But I don't know if I'll have everything in by July. I might be able to start getting a little bit of play testing for then. I don't know how much I'll have in. I, I, and July is going to fly by, and that's why I don't want to lie and say a date. And then July comes, and everybody's like, where is that? I would rather give myself August and say August because um, I know that'll be enough time. Mm. I know I don't have a date, but August 1st, excuse me, man, all this water I'm drinking. I'm, I'm about to start training for boxing next week. So I'm like, oh, I just, okay. I'm just, just randomly. I just, everything. I just randomly was like, hey, I don't know how to box my barber. He was like, no, you got me together. He was like, hey. I box, I tear you. And uh, yeah, but um, August 1st is my goal. I don't have a date other than that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I definitely need some play tests. It's going to be really close, too. I'm not doing an open beta because it's not a free game. I gave the free version away beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. The same version is a paid game, so I don't want to yeah. give the entire game away because then. Yeah, make your yeah. money, by all means. I do, that we, I'm purchasing. Yeah, appreciate it. So I definitely want to get it to you guys at least so you can play it, test it, tell me how it works. And then if you still want to support it on Steam when it goes live on Steam, please, like, I'll use every single dollar because you know how it is in life. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, that, I, I, I um, because I, I, I looked on Steam. I, I, is it, it's, it's not on there yet, right? No, no, no. I actually just spoke with uh, Steam today. Um, they sent me a message because I put it out for a review the store page yep. and they told me um, I had a feature under since early access you have to explain all of this stuff and it was one of them that said what is currently in this build and apparently I didn't list out the features there I listed them out in the description panel so they wanted me to add those um, also to that section so hopefully that's the only thing they came back and said so hopefully once they go ahead and look at that which they said two to three business days but it's actually much quicker because they basically reviewed it the same night I sent it didn't even realize oh, okay. um, Hopefully they'll be able to go ahead and say, hey, you good to go. You can pop it on the store and then you can go from there. And um, yeah, we're going to be in the motion. Then I got to rebuild my website. I, I stripped everything off my website. I'm um, got to throw some more stuff on my website um, as far as the tiers, explaining the game. I got some art now. I have I have some really, really good art I put together for the Steam page. So just be reusing that stuff, some of that for the website. And then when the trailer is available, just 
stuff that that I that it's stuff that needs to be done. But I've just been focusing on the game so much that I've kind of put it off. It's it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it's like having a baby. You don't want to worry about. Um, you don't buy the milk before the baby comes. I mean, I did. Mm -hmm. We bought the bottles. We bought everything else the baby would need, the containers. But we didn't actually put the milk in yet. And that's how I feel with this. It's like I'm building a container, which is the game. This is a very weird analogy. I don't know why I'm talking about this. But and I don't even yeah, parents will get it. Parents yeah. will get it. Yeah, and I'm building the container. And then the milk is just all of the stuff that I should have been done. <laughs> like making this thing page available, building the website, getting my terms of service, explain doing the tutorials, like all this other stuff. But I just gotta fill my container first. And then I well, put it in. Well, I can tell you this, like the community is ready. I'm ready for this game. Um shoot, like I'm ready for like it. I said, that's why I reached out to you. Uh, two years ago, because I was like, "Oh, we got something else." Okay, I'm, I'm on this. Let's let's figure this out. Let's let's find out about this game, man. Because, like, once again, man, you've given us options, and that's what the community needs now more than ever. Um, yeah. But you know what? I don't want to hold you too much longer because we we've been on this for well over an hour now, touching to. Um, oh God! Feel free to ask. I mean, I'm not I'm not in a rush. But if you if if it's time to wrap up, we good. But I oh no no yeah because you know I gotta gotta put you know edit everything. You <laughs> so um, can you give us your uh, social media links? Uh, where can we find you? Where can we follow you? Yep. So Twitter is my primary, um, and Twitter is I just changed it. So one second. <laughs> that was another thing Mike can tell me. He's like, hey, change the Twitter handle. I'm like, okay. I'm just listening now. Mark out CCG. So mark out is mark out collectible card game. So mark out CCG, all one word. Okay, and we'll also have that in the link in the description below. And if you do get the the Steam page up soon, send that to me so I could put that in the link in the description below too. So we also do that. But um, yeah, thank you very much for uh being on the Let's Talk podcast. Much appreciated. We're gonna definitely have you back on. We're definitely gonna have you back yeah. on. But um. And this is Dre41. As for my co-host, Sean Styles and Ken Washington, appreciate it. Catch you guys on the next episode later. Peace. All right.